Welcome to part 23 of my DIY backyard project. If you have missed the previous progress on how I built the deck by myself, yes, one person, you may want to check them out in the description because it was very exciting. For many of you plan to build a deck by yourself or even hiring a contractor, I hope you will find this helpful because there is a lot of technical tips I shared with you. My goal is to inspire more people into DIY. This time, we are talking about how to run the 120 volt cable from your house all the way to the deck, attach it to the string light and have a power outlet in the middle of the deck. There's a lot of technical information I want to share with you. Sounds exciting, isn't it? Let's get started. You may be wondering if I am qualified to talk about electrical work. Well, I have installed the 240 volt charger for my wife's electric vehicle. It has been working fine for 4 years. I did not even get an inspection because I know what I was doing and I was so confident that it would not start a fire. I will post a link in the description for anyone who is interested in it. Now you will need to shop for the electrical box, receptacle plastic cover, PVC conduit for your project. Here is a DIY tips on the preparation work. I recommend using pipe joint compound from your plumbing toolbox. There are covers and connectors you need to make sure they are completely waterproof. Joint compound is easier than Teflon tape for DIY people. This is the PVC adapter connecting to the metal box. We will use this to connect to the PVC conduit later in the video. Don't forget to put the cover at the back of the box, otherwise water can get inside. Alright, it's time to do some digging. You will need the right tool to get the job done easier. Believe it or not, it's not easy to find a trench shovel at my local hardware store. Well, there is always Amazon. Don't get confused with spade shovel. The angle is totally different. As you can see here, it's not as fast as you expected. But it's a good workout for the day. The next question is how deep you need to dig. For PVC conduit, by code is 18 inches. Right now I am at 12 inches. More digging is needed if you religiously followed the code. This is the rendering you may have seen before. Just to share with you exactly what I am doing, I am running the PVC conduit from the basement along to the side yard all the way to the back of the privacy screen of the deck. Here, I will install a double gank receptacle box, then I will continue to run the PVC conduit to the top of the privacy screen and install a single gank receptacle box for the string light. Finally, I will install a waterproof electrical outlet box on the deck. Now, we are removing the faucet from the wall and we will reuse this hole to run the electrical cable from the basement. For those of you wondering why I had the faucet removed, check out part 15 of this DIY deck series, because I did not like where the builder installed it. So I relocated to the other side of the house and, and installed a frost free faucet. Check out the video if you are interested, I will post the link in the description. Time to connect the PVC together, I strongly recommend the cutting tool, it gives you a clean cut. It's very important to use PVC cleaners on both ends, if you don't, you will regret. Then apply the PVC cement. Now the connection is waterproofed. This part is good, we will come back to this later. Let's take a look at the conduit in the soil, it's pretty much self-explanatory. Next, we will have to put the soil back. Here is another DIY tips, add water so that you can compact it better. I think you got the idea. Okay, let's talk about frost heave. 
In Ontario, Canada, our frost line is at 4 feet below the ground and we have installed the PVC conduit at 18 inches deep. This can be a potential problem in winter. The PVC conduit will break. The solution is to use expansion fittings for PVC conduit. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to find half an inch at my local hardware store. You can try it at the professional electric supply store, but for DIY people, there is always eBay. I got two of them from the States. And that's the expansion fittings. It has two O-rings inside. This allows the conduit to move up and down when there is expansion. That's fantastic. To install this, you have to extend it to the indicator in the middle right here. Of course, you want to install this with the moving part facing down, so rain and snow cannot get in. We need one expansion fittings on each side. This one is for the PVC conduit coming out from the ground to the deck. Now this is the other one. That's the PVC conduit from the basement to the ground. And this is the fun part. We are going to insert some twine in here. Yes, that's the guide wire. It will make your life a lot easier. If you don't do that and try to fish the cable, good luck to you. On the other end, we are going to use the vacuum to suck it out. Can you hear me? It's so loud. There you go, that's the guide wire. Next, we are working on the double gank electrical box. It's pretty simple. Just make sure you have all the covers and adapters sealed with pipe joint compound. Please don't criticize if the 90 degrees connection is up to code or not. That's not the scope of this video. The expansion fittings is working as expected. Awesome. Anyone want to guess what is it? I am installing something on the fence. Anyone? For any good quality DIY job, the basic is to pay attention to level both vertically and horizontally. The green laser leveling tool is a very handy tool for serious DIY people. I strongly recommend that. At this point, if everything is measured properly, the PVC conduit should be leveled with the green laser both horizontally and vertically. If not, you are screwed. Next, we will secure it to the privacy screen. Before going into the next step, I strongly recommend to do this test. After a thunderstorm, see if this paper towel is dry or not. For me, yes, it passed the test with flying colors. Let's talk about cables. In US and in Canada, most people run Romex inside of their house. But when it comes to PVC conduit, it's absolutely dangerous because it will overheat. What you need is to use T90 in Canada or THHN or THWN in the state. Always check your local code for details. If I were in the States, I would choose THWN2 which has the temperature rating at 90 degrees. The next item you need to consider is cable and breaker. I am using 14 gauge cable on 15 amp breaker. If you choose to run 20 amp, you need 12 gauge cable. What if you use 14 gauge cables on 20 amp breaker? 
No, that's very dangerous. It can start a fire in your house. These are 14 gauge T90 cables. I got them from those. One key difference between Romex and T90 is that these are stranded wires, while Romex is solid copper wires. Stranded wires is easier to go through the corners and tight space in the conduit. Of course, you need to buy three colors. Black for hot, white for neutral, and green for ground. Now, we are going to push this to the other side from here. There is no need to use the twine as the guide wire. For the elbow, here is a DIY tips. You want to leave some slack and make a loop like this. This will give you a smooth transition. Something I want to share with you, this brand called Red Dot has very good waterproof covers. But I got the wrong one. Look, it doesn't even close properly. You need to get the deeper version. Okay, that's the deeper version. Look, it's closing properly. If you have good eyes, you see there are some silicones over here. The foam gasket technically should give you a tight seal, but I want to take a step further. Why not? Remember we had the twined as the guide wired? Use the masking tape to tape it to the three wires to pull it from the other end. It's coming out! I am wiring this receptacle with a switch. There are multiple ways to wire it. Please refer to the menu. I wire it in such a way so the switch only controls the string light on top of the privacy screen. All these three outlets always have power regardless of the switch is on or off. Attach the ground wire to the box. Use the wire connectors for the ground and neutral. Finally, you have two black color wires left. The first one is the one coming from the ground. Connect that one to the receptacle and it will always have power. The other black color wire is the outgoing cable to the single gank electrical box for the string light up on the privacy screen that is controlled by the switch. Wait a second. If you have good eyes, you may notice that I did not use any GFCI outlet. We will get to that in a minute. The outdoor portion is almost completed. Electrical work is not too difficult, isn't it? Now install the waterproof cover and we are almost there. Let's move indoor to my basement. To secure the PVC conduit and make up the difference between the space, I am using a scrapped board from my deck. Yes, that's an AZAC PVC board. It fits perfectly. I am going to install a flexible PVC conduit for another electrical box as the junction point. I will explain why I need to do that later. Before doing that, I need to install some foam insulation. Because Canada is so cold, you will have condensation in winter. Also, apply some silicon caulking to seal the gap. For the electrical box, on one end, we are using the clamp. That's for Romax. On the other end, we are using a PVC adapter connects to the flexible PVC conduit. It's pretty much self-explanatory. I think you get the idea. I installed this lower than the joist on a 2x4. It's much easier to access the outlet. Okay, I know you have been wondering where is the GFCI protection. I am going to install this 15 amp GFCI receptacle here. Now, here is a DIY tip. You have to wire this to the bottom part of the device and get rid of the yellow color label. This will protect all the outlets downstream, meaning every single outlet outside will get protected. Now, the incoming Romex will get connected to the top part of the device. The T90, on the other hand, is from outside will get connected to the bottom part. To get the power, I ran Romax through the joist like a pro. Then tap into an existing light fixture junction box, simple enough for an unfinished basement. If you don't want to follow what I did, there is another way. 
you can run the wire all the way to the breaker panel and install a GFCI breaker. Believe it or not, the 15 amp GFCI breaker is close to $100 Canadian. Remember to put the fiberglass insulation and the vapor barrier back and tape it with the tuck tape. Now, the green LED lit up, I think, is ready to do some testing. Here's the circuit tester. If all the wires are connected properly, both LEDs in amber color will light up. When you press the button on top, it will trip the GFCI device. That's how it looks at the back of the privacy screen. Next, we are going to hang the LED string light. Perfect, the switch is working as expected. That's how it looks in my backyard. I hope this video gives you some useful information for your project. Now, you may have another question. Is this up to code? Honestly, I don't know. All I know is that it's safe enough not to start a fire or having someone get electrocuted. I think it's a successful DIY project. This video is getting a little bit too long. I think I will talk about how to install the concealable DAC grommet next time. I will also do some tests on the ASAC PVC boards after cutting a big opening. I will let you know if there is any potential issues. There is a lot of technical information you don't want to miss. My goal is to inspire more people into DIY. You may also want to check out other videos on my channel. I am pretty sure you will love them. Remember to subscribe, thanks for watching, and see you next time.